How's it going guys? Cracked Rack here, and I'm back to making story time videos for the time being. This time we're going to be discussing my time living in a little place called Felony Flats. This is essentially a really seedy area in Portland, Oregon, that for about five to six months when I was like 18, I lived in while working as a security guard. Long story short, at least to the relevant part, I was living with a relative at the time, this being about four years ago now, and they demanded I perform some household obligation that I didn't want to do, because I didn't understand how much it sucks ass to pay bills. I decided, with my excitable, barely legal brain, to pack my stuff and leave. So I moved out in protest. Because I had moved out so quickly though, without a plan, I didn't have a place lined up to live. So I went to some cafe or Starbucks or something, I don't remember, and I used their Wi-Fi on my phone to find a Craigslist posting offering a place to stay. I eventually found one that was advertising four other super cool young college-aged peeps looking for a fun, innocent time for about $700 a month. So I stuck with this posting. Looking back, that was probably a bad choice. Anyway, after reaching out to the owner, they got back to me within like 10 minutes and I hauled all of my shit there from a city bus. Now upon getting there, it actually seemed quite fantastic. See, up to this point, I had never experienced a ghetto in my life. I've had a pretty sheltered childhood in terms of dealing with ghetto anything, so I didn't even really register what I was seeing as ghetto or unusual or anything to, you know, stay away from. I remember going there and seeing in the parking lot a ton of really nice sports cars and thinking, wow, this place is high class. Looking back, these were probably just cheap shit boxes with modified everything that they bought from eBay that were likely being utilized by drug dealers. Anyway, the owner of this apartment came out and introduced herself as... Well, let's just call her Kai. Kai was a bisexual, fit, and okay-looking 23-year-old woman in a lesbian relationship with some extremely insecure, overweight, depressed 18-year-old girl. Said girl would later get cheated on, but that's later on. She, like me, was also a security guard, so I trusted her for some reason. Anyway, I met with her and she took me inside her apartment and inside were three other people there. There was a really petite Mexican 18-year-old woman who was honestly really scary. There was an overweight 18-year-old woman who did not like herself, as I previously mentioned. And then there was a really tall and buff 18-year-old man there who was kind of like the hatchet man of the apartment. He was nearly seven foot tall. I refer to these 18-year-olds as fully grown adults because these were not average 18-year-olds that you'd find in like a high school. These were hardened adults that had been through extreme trauma and hell. They actually told me about themselves further during our little interview and the man had actually been getting sexually assaulted by his own family members since he was three. The girl had been getting sexually assaulted by men brutally since she was like 13, them being in a relationship, FYI. However, in the interview, they mentioned that because of this, they were going to have to kick me out for a few days to decide if I'm cool or not to stay as I could be a rapist. So I had the brilliant idea then and there of blurting out to them that this wouldn't be a problem as I was gay. I convinced them so well that I was a homosexual with my next words that they were discussing putting me out there into the dating game, which scared the shit out of me as keeping up that lie would require a ton of effort, but I was willing to do it, I was that desperate for a place to stay. The economy is bad, so they agreed to let me stay with them, and I moved all my shit in and unpacked it. My shit being a briefcase full of clothes, a laptop, and a volcano smoke machine for weed, which I always had a bunch of somehow. At first, the roommates were super nice. The woman was really complimentary of me and accepting of me and was making a bunch of exceptions for me because she liked me. The other woman was flirting with me and making weird comments about how if I wasn't gay, she would have intercourse with me in front of her boyfriend. The man was extremely superficially kind, but there was just something really off about him. I can't really describe it, but he just gave off a really dark, like, reptile brain energy. That really creeped me out and made me want to avoid him. The first thing I noticed about this place was that it was a filthy dump. It was a disgusting mess everywhere. The couple's room was extremely filthy and reeked of sweat and used condoms after 
rough sex, and smelly stale beer cups, I was immediately off-put, but I dealt with it. The apartment, its cleanliness aside, wasn't the worst thing in the world. The walls were thin and it had no air conditioning and I could hear my roommates having sex every single time, which they did constantly, as loud as humanly possible. And it had no air conditioning, but it was pretty comfortable to hang out in during the day. However, after about a week of living there, I started noticing some serious issues with my roommates. For one, the man was starting to invade my boundaries and clearly had serious resentment for me for whatever reason. I came home one day and he was standing in my room. And when I asked him what he was doing, he said he had been searching through all of my luggage to get an idea of what my possessions consisted of, just in case I was a threat he needed to neutralize. Uh, immediately after this, my opinion of this apartment and my roommates were starting to shift. And I was starting to get genuinely uncomfortable around them, and I just wanted to be away from them. For one, the man started to reveal more information about himself, and a picture of him was starting to form in my mind. That was not good. He had first told me that he was a door-to-door -door salesman, and that sounded reasonable enough. But he revealed that he also actually did quote-unquote on-the-side drug dealing. He started discussing things that had happened to him before, and it was really starting to, like, unnerve me to the point where he was starting to fucking scare the shit out of me. Essentially, he had been shot multiple times during drug deals gone bad, and he showed me proof of it on his body. He also had a bunch of weird, scary friends that were just not normal. I wish I had gotten more info than that, but after he told me these things, I completely distanced myself from him. However, as that guy distanced from me, my other roommates were starting to creep me out as well. For example, one day I was in my room with the door shut, jerking off, I was jerking my little prepubescent 18-year-old acne-ridden wiener, and then all of a sudden I heard my door, which was to the left of me, start to open. Suddenly the door then slams open, and there's Kai staring at me butt-naked, masturbating. I was very uncomfortable by this, and frankly, I don't care if you're an attractive female. Do not come into my personal space and time if I did not give you consent to do so. That is very violating. She made up some story about why she came in while looking at my genitalia and then slowly left the room closing the door. The Latina girl I discussed earlier also tried to have sexual relations with me on multiple occasions, even though I found her very creepy and unhygienic and unappealing, and she was also dating a hardcore drug dealer, so absolutely not. Around this time, about five months in, is when things started to go very south. They were becoming very controlling of me, telling me when I could and couldn't drink alcohol, not letting me quit my job or find a better one because this one paid the best. They would demand I came home when I was out with friends to do some menial housework that did not matter. It was becoming very nightmarish and I was very scared to defend myself because the man was aggressive as hell and huge as fuck, and I believe he was also in possession of a firearm. I couldn't believe I was in this situation when literally all I wanted was a place to play video games and smoke weed while working a shitty but easy 9 to 5. Which is why you should realize that it's very easy to get into awful situations when you're desperate for something. Anyway, this was around when the big fight occurred. The big fight was when I wasn't going to work as much as I was supposed to be. See, I was supposed to be going to work every day, but I opted for a more suitable three-day-a-work week schedule. Look, I was completely burnt out. I was not supposed to be a security guard with the sole responsibility of getting into armed conflicts for downtown Portland, where the Blood Street Gang famously hangs out. I wasn't even supposed to be working there. I failed the drug test. Anyway, I was burnt out and didn't want to go to work anymore, so I just stopped going and instead drank whiskey while watching YouTube videos. This did not make my roommates happy, so she confronted me. I gave her some excuse, which is bad, but we weren't like in a huge conflict or anything, and this was the first conflict we had even had over text. Yet because the man we lived with was such a hard ass, he had to get involved, even though he wasn't in control of anything and wasn't even the leaseholder. So he started screaming at me over text, essentially saying if I didn't go to work, he was gonna pimp my ass on the fucking streets. So I responded not in a friendly way as anyone would, but it was not anything that should make anyone nearly as upset as he got. It was very childish. He started having a mental breakdown. 
He came home, and then he also started punching on the walls everywhere, screaming about how he was so fucking done with me, and a bunch of other vile shit. But, you know, for a couple days after that, things were fine, and things were actually genuinely okay for like three or four days after that, and I thought everything was good. But, uh, no, it wasn't. I came home from work one day, and he was waiting for me in the kitchen. He got up and told me to come with him, and then he made me sit in the back of his car, and he lectured me for 15 minutes on the way to some sketchy friend meet about how he was planning on coming in my room while I slept and bashing my skull in and beating the fuck out of me. He was getting really passionate about describing it in detail, and he was getting more and more violent with his descriptions. Considering I was a frail 18 year old who lived with this guy, I did not stand up for myself, so I let him get away with it. We then drove to a meetup with his friends under a bridge where he adopted a baby pit bull. Said pit bull was neglected and kept in a cage 24 hours of the day by my roommates once they owned him. And they also screamed at it and didn't feed it or clean up after it. Luckily, the lesbian lease owner did see the abuse and step in, rightfully, and adopt the dog, so there's a semblance of good in these guys, I guess. But the guy who sold it to my roommate was really creepy, and he came over the night of as well. He was this huge Mexican 20 year old, and he had a really nasty porn stash, and he also had zero emotional, like, anything. He was completely blank. Though I guess the most presently dangerous detail about him was that he wore a red bandana around his neck everywhere and pulled it up over his face constantly and discussed committing terroristic acts. I later found out he was gay and my roommate was attempting to hook me up with him because he assumed I wanted to have sex with him due to my sexual orientation. Anyway, things were starting to get real bad around here. My job fired me for drug abuse and I was hours away from other jobs. My roommates were becoming increasingly hostile, and a bunch of other shit was happening too. I also was really genuinely scared that my roommate was gonna pimp my ass out, for real. I checked his phone because it was unlocked and in plain view while he was gone to get an idea of who he was, and he contacted a new girl on Instagram every five seconds. He had sent requests for meetups and sex and booty rubs to 500 women at least. None of which were of quality at all, they were very hard up people, so maybe he was trying to traffic some low quality whores. At this point, I just wanted out, so I told them I was fucking leaving, I was done with this shit, and so with that, they started looking for a new roommate. Well, a few days before I left that place, they interviewed a guy who was gonna live here next. He was the next victim, I guess. And it was really weird. He came in, they introduced themselves, he announced that he was 30, and then the Latina girl instantly started talking about sucking his cock and stuffing his cock in her pussy at random intervals throughout the day and how that was a requirement for living there, which she wasn't lying about. She made that rule abundantly clear in my time there. Anyway, long story short, I got into another fight with them on Christmas Eve, I think. It resulted in me just packing my shit, getting into one of my family members' vehicles, and just piecing the fuck out. The moral of the story is that if you're an 18 to 25 year old still living with their parents and you're desperate to leave the house, don't rush it and just chill out, because living on your own actually really fucking sucks.